All right, I've got all the digital painting to do a kind of refined version of what I wanted to do done. I just need to finish up this bottom because it's still kind of repeating itself. And I can, of course, use my eraser as well and shape it. All right, I like that. Okay, so now that it's done, I can crop it because I don't need my references anymore. So crop it out of my reference, just make it kind of look good in the frame. You want it to be at least eight by 10 by 350. Mine's bigger than that. It's like 10 by 12 and a half, something like that. Nice little dog portrait. Okay, I've still got all my different layers, right, to play with. I have the refined paint layer, I have the shape paint layer, then I have the everything kind of combined and brought together. And I might decide, oh, I want multiples on for my finish. I think I want that many on. I'll just erase away the edges of this one. So I like those kind of open edges around it that make them look quite so thick. Little gaps. All right, so once you're happy with it, save it as your PSD. I'm gonna keep a blank white background and then save a copy as a JPEG. Make sure you know where to find it. And then we're gonna put it up to canvas. All you need is your initial photo reference and your finished JPEG to submit this project. I'll call this my final refined painting. And I'll upload it from my very organized folder. There's the JPEG. But because this is digital painting and not traditional painting, it doesn't need to end there. We can play with pushing it further, which you might want not do for this assignment, but you might consider for finishing techniques for your final project. And so what I would like to do is inspired by some of these experimental digital paintings. You see the halftone dots there kind of layered in. You see some of the bright color separations. I'm going to just play with it a little bit more, not looking at reference but just experimenting. Now that I have a PSD file, that's my own to play with. So to do this, I'm gonna tuck this back into Photoshop. I'm gonna make Photoshop nice and big. And then I'm going to merge it all together. 
say uh, option layer merge visible. So I have even the white background on top there. It's locked. And then I'm going to use my action that we use for our posters or to play with. You can go to those videos in YouTube to, to get actions, load them into your own Photoshop. My Carl color separations. And I'm going to do a CMYK full run. I'm going to go ahead and play that and not flatten it and not rasterize. And it's going to make new files. You can see it's already making a cyan dot one. And this is high res. This is, you know, 350 pixels per inch. But my action will change it to 300 pixels per inch so that I have to size it. And that will kind of soften the, the bitmap dots a little bit as I size it to my studio resolution of 350. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on these different kind of primary colored dot screens and play with layering them into my image. Just like you can composite anything to kind of finish it off. Between compositing and digital painting, you can really finish off an image any way you like. All right, so this is my dot screens. They're, they're offset from each other. So it's like an old newspaper done too quickly. It's mostly the cyan that's offset. So I'm going to copy that. Command C, bring it back to my original, and layer it on top. Paste it in and then size it up. Don't even need it to match. And then I'm going to sync it down through the image, maybe put it on top and use a different blending mode. Like soft light works pretty well. Yeah, let's try that. And then I can just use a big eraser and erase away from it in different places. And see how that looks really warm. Kind of warms it up. And I can just use this dot screen where I think it's helpful. Definitely in the least, the less interesting parts. Kind of knocks it all back. I can take the opacity on my eraser down a little bit. So you see, I get these little stray dot screens going. Different levels. Give it a, a kind of a finish that I'm into right now. And that's just with cyan. So I can steal another one. about the yellow and copy that screen and then paste it on top of the cyan one, place it in, stretch it, maybe even offset it to the corner a little bit. This is having fun with post-production. Sink it down underneath. Play with a different blending mode. Overlays nice there. So it just gives the, the edges a little bit of excitement. I can erase away where I think it's too strong. Subtly. Just a little pop of that pure color kind of coming through little places. I like that. Save that. And now magenta.
put that in there. Almost like a three, an old 3D, I can put that off to one side, like up and to the right, and then sink it down. And then overlay it. But this one I'm going to take the opacity down on. And then like I did with the cyan, just really heavily erase, except where I think it's helpful. So I'm addressing kind of all the primary colors that will go into printing it. It kind of saturates it a little bit. Makes my dog a little bit more 21st century. And then I can always play with the actual hue of these. So I can push those magenta dots to be a little warmer, maybe even a little bit brighter, maybe even a little darker. So much I can do and have fun with. All right, now I can save it. Now what if I really want to mess with it? I can take my refined painting, duplicate it, move it on top of everything, just the refined paint. Because remember, this is a lot of individual strokes. And I can put outline strokes around it. I can make those strokes pretty large positioned outside, just like so, right? Then I can rasterize that layer style. This is me just playing. And then play with different modes of blending. Let's try, let's see. Let's try pin light. And now if I warp this, shift it, can use this to have like some really almost like uh, tearing the paper up. Distortions. And I can decide how heavy I want them to be. And I can erase away from it where I don't want it. But that makes it into almost like a watercolor painting. These really strong choices. Let's try it again. Same trick. To push it even further and then push that stroke even bigger. See? And it becomes almost just a sketch of the painting that's underneath. So this is how I like to play with digital paintings. As I go.